Hi everybody, I'm Susie Orman. And what you are about to see are interviews with women who have survived abusive relationships. They are intimate, they are personal, and they are life transforming. Watch and learn. Tiffany, here you are, you are 28 years of age and you have a nine-year-old daughter, a six-year-old son, and for seven years, for seven years, you were in a serious, abusive relationship. Tell me about it. It was, I don't even know. It, yeah, it's all right. It was hard. It was hard just trying to find out who I was, what I wanted. I didn't know what I wanted out of life, what I wanted for myself, where I was gonna be. It was just a trap. And you were 18 years of age when you met him? Yes. So a baby. Yeah. Baby. And you met him, and tell me about that situation. When I met him, met him at first, I thought it was love. I thought this was who, you know, I was meant to be with. He was charming, he was kind, he showed me lots of affection, something I was lacking before. Um, so that made me feel like maybe that was love. Did he give you gifts? Yes. Because that's the, the, the similarity between all of the interviews that we've done is he was charming, he made me feel like he was gonna take care of me, he lavished me with gifts, yeah. he was there in every possible way, no red flags in the beginning at all, it was just love. Yeah. Did you move in right away? About, about three months later I moved in. With to, him. to his place? Yeah, because he rescued me. He rescued you from what? My mom, we had a big fight and he came, you know, knight in shining armor, took me away. So I felt, oh, I'm, I'm gonna be protected. Do you remember what that fight was about with your mom? Over laundry. Over so, laundry? Yeah, over laundry. Over laundry, he rescued you into seven years of abuse. Yeah. So you move in with him, what happens? He, you know, his family showed me love. Everyone was welcoming at first, and then a month later, it just went downhill. He started to be physically abusive. How? Over me, just, he's very jealous. So he started hitting me and, like, just trying to tell me what I can and can't do. Take me back in time to the first time you were hit by him. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. So he picked me up from my cousin's house and the simple thing as walking ahead with my cousin and leaving him behind in the car, he got upset. He pushed me up against the car and tried to choke me and tell me, what am I doing? In I'm front of your cousin? In front of my cousin. What did your cousin say to you when she saw that? She was in shock. She was afraid for me and she told me to leave, but she's younger. So I, was, I said, you know, you don't know what you're talking about. It's just a one time thing. And it didn't stop after that. And no red flags went off at that point? No, because here you are, 18 years of age, and he said he was sorry and he was jealous. Did any part of you like that he was jealous? Yeah, because I felt, I felt that, okay, he loves me, maybe this is love. So it is possible that for women out there, that when they're with somebody and that person is controlling them, they see that as love because that person wants all your attention, so that means I'm wanted. It's not controlling, it's not abusive, it's love. Yeah. That's why all of you define it that way. Yeah. Because you're wanted maybe for the first time in your life. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. So now he hits you once. When does he hit you again? It's like so often, at least every other week after then. So he hits you once, twice, three times, four times. He just keeps hitting you. Yeah. And yet you had a child with him. Yeah. Was that, were you trying to have a child with him? No. And you not only had one child with him, you had two, ch another child with him. During that time when he was hitting you and you were then having a sexual relationship with him, was that relationship abusive? Yeah. So what did that feel like? It felt like I had no control of my own body. Like saying no was not, didn't, he didn't understand no. So he raped you? Yeah. How many times did he rape you? Multiple times. And that's actually my, was my final straw because he tried to rape me in front of my daughter. 
Yeah. So once again, we have a mother yeah. who draws a line in the sand because of her daughter. Yeah. Don't you find that fascinating? Yeah. You can do for her what you could not do for yourself. Yeah. Did you even know that you were being financially abused? No. You knew you were being verbally abused, sexually abused, physically abused, emotionally abused, psychologically abused, but once again, we have a woman who is being financially abused, but didn't know it. When did you find out that you were financially abused? This year. This year? This year. What happened? Because even when I called the hotline, they asked you, are you being financially abused? I said, no. But just um, going back and just thinking about it, all the things that I went through, me being an immigrant and having to still work you know, and support him and give him all my money, that's financial abuse. Yeah. So I didn't know the definition. How much money do you think you gave him over all this time? Thousands. And thousands. Yeah, I paid the child support. He took my, my kids' tax money to buy a car that we barely got to use. He yeah. took everything. He took everything. Yeah. I would buy stuff for him instead of myself. So I, I, I gave it to him. And when you did that, what was your hope? That if I give you this gift, if I buy this for you, what were you hoping? That maybe it will change. And be nice to you. Yeah. So you always had hope. Yeah. Did you still at that point love him? I did. Or you thought you did? I thought I did. Yep. Isn't that fascinating? Yeah. When you look back on that now, what would you tell to the women who are young in a relationship? and they feel like they love their abuser, what would you tell them? Love yourself. Once you, once you learn to love yourself, you know what love is, and you will understand that what you're going through is not love at all, and you need to get out. So you have tears in your eyes right now. What are those tears about? <laughs> because I know that I'm strong, and just thinking about the things that I've been through and thinking that I wasn't strong back then and just coming to this revolution makes me happy. They're happy tears, actually. I love that. They're tears of joy. Yeah. Because you know what I'm sitting here thinking as I'm talking with you, you little 28-year-old? I'm thinking, holy popcorn. Are you kidding me? This woman has been abused on every possible level. This woman has two kids. This woman was a single mother. This woman was in a country that she didn't even have the legal papers to be here. And this woman left on her own to take care of her kids with nothing, no money, nothing. And she's made it. Yeah. You've made it. Yeah. You now are giving a gift to all the women out there that are going to see this that are in the exact same situation as you were in, yeah. and they don't know what to do. I have such admiration for your strength. I can't even tell you. Thank you. Because you've been through more than most, and you've come out the other end. Yeah, thank you so much. It has much. been such an honor to be able to sit here with you. Me too, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you.